Hi and welcome back. Now in this chapter, just want to go through the steps which you can actually carry out if you want to go ahead and take your exam online. So in the current situation, we have to look at this as an option. Now over here, I'm giving an example of one of the exams. You can perform the same set of steps for any of the Azure based exams. So you can first of all go on to your desired exam page. Over here, I've already gone ahead and logged into one of my accounts. You can then go ahead and schedule your exam. So you can go ahead and first verify your information. Once you scroll down, you can click on save and continue. Next, you can go ahead and continue to schedule your exam. Now over here, you have to make sure that you choose the option at my home or office. Now, preferably, you should schedule the exam on the same machine on which you are going to be taking your exam on. So currently I'm taking my exam, let's say on this particular machine. So what you can do, you can actually go ahead and run a quick pre-check. So what this does is that it just goes ahead and checks your microphone, your internet speed and your webcam. If all of these are working as they should, then that means at least the initial checks have been carried out. You can go ahead on to next. So once you've gone ahead and ensured you have all of that in place, you can read all of the terms and conditions. You can go ahead and select all of these. Click on to next. And then all of the remaining settings are the same. So you choose your preferred language. You go on to next. You can view all of the testing policies if you want to. You can go on to next and you can select the date and the time. So over here, it's asking what is the language you prefer the proctor to speak. So on the other end, when you go ahead and take an online exam, so there will be a proctor or a person on the other side. Now that proctor might want to speak with you before the exam begins. It's not required. Your exam can actually begin without the requirement of the proctor speaking to you. So the proctor, if the proctor feels that everything is fine, they'll go ahead and start the exam. So you can go ahead and choose the language. You can go ahead and then select the date and time. So if you look at the date, you have a lot of options when it comes to the time. So you can go ahead and choose the time. And that's it. You can then go and complete the payment and schedule your exam. Now, once you go ahead and schedule your exam, so you'll get an email notification. You'll get all the information that's required for you to go ahead and start the exam on the desired date and time. Now, let's say that you schedule your exam at 8 p.m. Please make sure to go ahead and log in to the exam at least half an hour prior. So you need 30 minutes to go ahead and do the required registration process. Now you also have to ensure that you have a government ID in place. So before the exam actually starts, you'll actually have to take a picture of that ID and send it across. Now there are a list of steps that are given over here. So what you have to do is that you actually have to first log in, go on to your dashboard. You go on to start a previously scheduled exam. You will then be able to see your exams and then you can click on begin. Now, please note you can only click on begin half an hour before the allotted time. So I said, if your exam is at 8 p.m., you can start your exam at 7.30 only or after that. And also remember that, let's say your exam is at 8 o'clock. I think they give you a grace 15 minutes. So at 8.15, you have time till 8.15 to go ahead and actually begin your exam. But I don't think after that you can actually go ahead and start the exam. You might need to forfeit the exam and you may lose the money. So please ensure half an hour before the exam starts to go ahead and begin your exam. 
Now, the reason for this is because there is a list of steps that you have to perform. So when you go ahead and click on begin an exam, so you will need to go ahead on to a link, you'll get a code and you will have an application using that application. So that application could be on your mobile device. You have to go ahead and take a picture of yourself. So basically just your face, you have to go ahead and take a picture of your government ID. You have to take picture of your room in terms of what is to the left of your screen, what is to the right of your screen, what is on the front of your screen, what is at the back of your screen. So you have to take all of these pictures submitted in that mobile application and basically that information goes on to the proctor and then the proctor will basically review that information and then will allow you to start the exam. So this process is very strict even at the time of the exam. So the continuous recording of your face will actually occur, will actually take place. If you make any sudden movements, if you get out of your seat, then you run the risk of your exam being canceled. So this needs to be a really strict environment for taking your exam. So over here, I'm just giving pictures of my room. So I have made sure that the desk on which I'm working on is clean. I just have my system, no clutter at all. It needs to be a clean setup. You should not have your mobile device, no microphone, nothing in the local vicinity. So during the beginning of the exam, I said that you have to go ahead and take a picture of yourself and of the room. During that time, you can use your mobile device. But once you submit all the information, I go ahead, turn off my mobile, keep it in a very distant place, go back on my seat and start the exam. So you have the brief moment in time in which you can actually go ahead and dispose of your mobile onto a very secure place. Right, I hope this has been helpful. So please go ahead, take your online exam. I've done it myself. Even though it is a stringent process, it's very easy. It works smoothly. So, so far I've done the exam twice online, not faced any issues. Right, this marks the end of this chapter.